Welcome back to another episode of the Who You Know Show podcast, where what you know is important, but who you know can make all the difference in your business, career, relationships, and life. My name is Trevor Houston, and on this show, you'll learn the strategy, grit, and mindset it takes to overcome obstacles so you can level up in your career, recover your cash flow, and live the life of purpose that God intended for you. Don't forget to look at the mic drop moments time stamped in the show notes below. And if you've enjoyed today's episode, make sure to pay it forward, subscribe and leave an honest review so we can improve. Thanks for listening. My name is Trevor Houston, and please enjoy this episode of the Who You Know Show. On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to find your passion and build a career around it. So before we get to that, though, I want you to start to picture yourself like a sailboat for just a moment. I want you to think of yourself and think of your life like a sailboat, okay? The wind is in your sails, and you got a current beneath you, and you start to cruise through life, like high school, college, starting a new career, and then the wind starts to change and kind of like tosses you around a little bit, and It starts to look like the storm is doing its best to drown you. Life can often try to push you in a direction that you don't want to go. And many times, you got to break out the oars and just start rowing to keep moving in the direction that you want to go. And if you stop rowing and just hope that the winds is going to get you where you want to go, well, you may be disappointed. Because you're going to probably arrive in the wrong destination. And see, it's no secret that many people are unhappy with their jobs. A recent study found that only 13% of workers worldwide are engaged in their work. And first they called this thing the great resignation. Then they called it quiet quitting. And depending on who you ask, Quiet quitting can mean a few different things. For some, it's a way of keeping your perspective so your job won't take over the rest of your life. And others see this as a little bit of a darker side to this thing. They say it's a sign of being disengaged at work. And it could have a negative impact on your career and society. And a recent Gallup poll found that at least half of American workers say they're doing the bare minimum to meet the job description. So I got to ask you a question. Is there a middle ground between, you know, being a workaholic and just kind of like going through the motions? And how can you find work that you love? And once you identify it, How can you build a career around it? See, there's no one size fits all to these questions. But there are a few things you can do to increase your chances of finding work that you love. First, think about the things that make you happy and fulfilled. What makes you happy? What makes you lose track of time? For me, it's creating processes, training, it's building people, it's the journey of growing my businesses, and for you, it's probably going to be something different. So today, I wanted to share with you three ways to identify what makes you happy and turn your passion into a long-term career. And as a bonus, I'm also going to show you five ways to protect yourself from getting disconnected in this new world of burnout everybody seems to be going through. So let's start by identifying what makes you happy. What makes you fulfilled? Number one, I think you should make a list of the activities that you enjoy doing and prioritize the things that you want most. Consider how you could turn your passion into a long-term career. For an example, if you love spending time outdoors, 
you might consider a career as an environmentalist. I feel like too many people just let life happen to them instead of being proactive about creating the life of their dreams. So once you've identified a few possible career paths, it's time to dig a little bit deeper and do some research. Research, research, research. You have to think about what does a typical day look like in this field and what kind of education and training is required. Step number two, you need to try some new things. Try, 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 try. Try as many things as possible, as early as possible as you can. Explore different careers and see which one resonates with you. Talk to people who are already doing the things that you know you can do and go in the places you know you can go. Talk to people who are already doing those things. Now, I will say this step is easier the earlier in life that you can do this. Another thing that you can do is volunteer in a field that interests you. I actually started my career with the job seeker community through volunteering. And, you know, years later, like, this is my passion. I found it. But it started through volunteering at a local church. And I just got so connected with helping to rebuild people who were broken that I just, I just felt so called to it. And here I am years and years later, and I never saw myself in this, but if, if it wasn't for volunteering, I never would have found that purpose. So volunteer in fields that interest you. Take classes or workshops that are related to your field of interest. And lastly, network with people who work in your desired field, right? You can go to networking events or meetup.com or search for networking events in your, in your city or online or, or even events on LinkedIn, right? So network with people who are doing what you want to be doing. So all of that is step two, which is try new things, right? Figure out what, it, what you enjoy, what you love. Step number three. If you're still unsure on how to turn your passion into a career, consider working with a coach or a mentor. Look for someone who is doing what you want to do. You can search on Facebook or LinkedIn to find successful coaches in your field of interest. And once you've found a potential mentor, don't simply say, hey, let me pick your brain. Because let me tell you something. Ain't nobody got time for that. (laughs) All right. I don't know how many times I've heard people reach out. Hey, let me pick your brain. Let me pick your brain. No, no, no. That's not the way to get a mentor. Reach out, introduce yourself, and then try to find ways that you can actually add value into their life. What can you do to help them? How can you make their life better? And also, make sure that this person has the time and the willingness to help you. But I promise you, if you go give first, you're going to get a better chance of landing that mentor. What you do for a living can have a big impact on the quality of your life. So it's important to take time to find the work you're passionate about. And you'll be more likely to find success and satisfaction. If you're currently seeking a new opportunity or thinking about making a transition, I invite you to join our free Career Transition Summit where I can show you how to land your dream job and recover your cash flow without ever touching your resume. So you can click the link in the description to learn more. If you're already in a career you enjoy, but maybe you're finding yourself a little bit mm, disconnected due to the post-pandemic changes that we now work in, consider using a few techniques to protect your career. So here's five things that you can do to stay motivated. Number one, communicate directly. Here's the thing. A lot of experts say that poor management and remote work are the two main reasons behind quiet quitting. So go in. Talk face-to-face as much as possible. Have weekly one-on-one sessions with your boss. The human element is still absolutely crucial. Number two, clarify expectations Understand your boss's priorities, what they are, and how your performance will be measured. And make sure to ask for feedback and put things in writing. Number three, 
Connect with the mission. Figure out how your role relates to the overall purpose of the organization. If you disagree with the company's values, well, you may need to just move on. Step number four, continue learning. Keep your skills up to date and give yourself challenges that motivate you. Always be learning. Take courses and read books about your industry. Join committees and volunteer for you know, different projects, but continue learning. And step number five, stay financially solvent. There's already some talk about quiet firing as a passive aggressive way to pressure difficult employees to leave. So think about your financial future, even if you dislike your job. So here's the deal. The concerns about quiet quitting may be a little bit exaggerated, but the question it raises are real. And here's the thing. You spend about one third of your life at work. One third. Think of that. One third. So you need to make that time as pleasant as possible. You need to make sure that you can align your passions within your career. Have you ever heard somebody say that if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life? Well, find your passion and make sure you build a career around it. Thanks for listening to the Who You Know Show podcast. My name is Trevor Houston, and if you've enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing wherever you listen and leave us a positive review to help us keep the mics on in the studio. Until next week, that's the show. It's all about who you know. Who you know.